Assalamu alaikum everybody, today we'll be looking at Suresha Mar census. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's jump straight into the video. Suresha Mar census is a gram-negative rod. It's a main human pathogen. It's an opportunistic pathogen which means whenever it finds an opportunity to cause an infection, it will definitely cause. It's a facultative anaerobe. It produces red pigment that's called prodigiosin. And due to that pigment, it forms red pigmented colonies on culture. It belongs to the family Enterobacteriaceae. It performs casein hydrolysis and shows a positive nitrate test also positive citrate utilization test. It is oxidase negative but catalase positive. It is not responsible for fermenting lactose, that's why I've written lactose fermentation is negative, but it ferments glucose, that's why glucose fermentation is positive. Serratia marcensis causes a variety of hospital acquired infections like catheter associated bacteremia, respiratory tract infections, for example pneumonia, urinary tract infections, wound infections, and certain other infections, like meningitis, that's the inflammation of meninges, the three protective layers of the brain and spinal cord, septicemia, endocarditis. Lecture outline, we're done with the introduction of serratia marcensis. Now we'll be looking at its classification, morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis and clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll be with the lecture. Prior to talking about serratia marcensis in detail, we should know how the bacteria are classified. Bacteria are classified into spirochetes. They are also classified based on acid fast staining into acid fast bacteria. And there's an exception that's the mycoplasma. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We are done with all of them. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel. And gram negative, which are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis, and rods. And rather further subdivided into aerobic like pseudomonas, anaerobic like bacteroides, and facultative. Facultative are further subdivided into curve that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio. I've got videos on them. If you want to watch them, be sure to check out the channel. And also into straight. Straight ones are further subdivided into enteric and related like E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, the topic of today's video, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. And zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pastorella, Yersinia, and respiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Boditella, Legionella. Gram negative bacteria are also classified based on different shapes like Diplococci, Cucobacilli, rods, and comma shaped. Diplococci are further subdivided based on maltose fermentation. If a bacterium ferments maltose, it's Neisseria meningitidis, and if it doesn't, it's Neisseria gonorrhea. Cucobacilli include Haemophilus influenza, Brucella, Pastorella, Boditella, Pertussis. Rods are further subdivided based on lactose fermentation. Bacteria who ferment lactose are fast or slow fermenters. Fast ones include Klebsiella, E. coli, Enterobacter. And slow ones include Serratia and others. And non-lactose fermenters are further subdivided based on oxidase tests. If a bacterium comes to be oxidase positive, it's Pseudomonas. And if bacteria come to be oxidase negative, they are going to be Shigella, Salmonella, Proteus, and Yersinia. Comma-shaped bacteria are further subdivided based on certain criteria, like if a bacterium produces urease, it's H. pylori. If it grows in alkaline media, it's Vibrio cholerae, And if it grows in 42 degrees Celsius temperature, it's Campylobacter jejuni. Morphology Serratia marcensis is the rod-shaped bacterium with rounded ends. It varies in size from 0.5 to 0.8 micrometers in diameter and 0.9 to 2 micrometers in length. It is pink-colored. The reason is it's gram-negative. Structure. It is encapsulated, which means it has got a capsule. It is not responsible for forming spores and is motile. Habitat. Hosts. Human beings are the hosts of Serratia marcensis. They are frequently found in large intestine, but are also present in respiratory tract of hospitalized adults, urinary tract of hospitalized adults, gastrointestinal system of children. And it can also be found in damp environments like wet environments like soil, water, bathrooms, dirt, subgingival biofilm of teeth. If you see something red in your bathroom, don't ever think that it is something normal. It's definitely going to be serratia mosensis. Transmission. Serratia marcensis is transmitted via direct contact. If a person gets into contact with the serratia marcensis present on a wall in the bathroom, so it, the person will definitely get the infection. 
Also, the droplets of cerecia massensis have been found growing on catheters and in sterile solutions. And also, cerecia massensis causes endocarditis in users of injection drugs. Pathogenesis. Sites of infection of cerecia massensis include urinary tract, respiratory tract, wounds, breasts, and eyes. Cerecia massensis infections are related to hospitalization, especially invasive procedures such as IV catheterization, respiratory intubation, and urinary tract manipulation. In addition, outbreaks of serratia pneumonia have been associated with contamination of water in respiratory therapy devices. Clinical findings are dependent on the type of the disease. If the person is having an infection in the urinary tract, symptoms are going to be frequent urination, dysuria, pyuria, fever. If the person is going to have a pneumonia, the symptoms will be fever, cough, chest discomfort, and so. Lab diagnosis will need samples of blood, urine, wound, and pus from humans. And if serratia marcensis are present on different non-living surfaces like walls, floors, corners, door handles, stethoscope, and other medical equipment, then we can also get sample from there because they might be responsible for causing any of the infections called restoration marcensis if a person has got a direct contact with red kind of thing on these non-living surfaces or things. Microscopy. On gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram-negative because it's pink-colored. It is rod-shaped with rounded ends and it varies in size from 0.5 to 0.8 micrometer in diameter and 0.9 to 2 micrometers in length. It is pink-colored. Culture. Serratia marcensis produces red pigmented colonies. The reason is it produces a pigment. It is late lactose fermenting and its colonies are small and round as you can see in this picture. And the agar used for that is Meconikis or EMB agar. Treatment. Carbapenems, aminoglycosides are used in combination with third and eventually fourth generation cephalosporins. Prevention. Changing the site of IV catheters, removing urinary catheters whenever we found that there is serratia marcensis present on that catheter. Proper care of respiratory therapy devices to be taken because these devices play an important role in causing infections of serratia marcensis and there's no vaccine that can work against serratia marcensis infections. All right, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is serratia marcensis. It is responsible for causing catheter-associated bacteremia, respiratory tract infections like pneumonia, urinary tract infections, wound infections, and certain other infections like meningitis, septicemia, and endocarditis. Mode of transmission is via direct contact with serratia marcensis or the droplets of serratia marcensis and also the people who get IV drugs are at risk of developing infections caused by serratia marcensis. Hosts are humans and damp environments. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, and culture. For treatment, carbapenems, aminoglycosides are used in combination with third and fourth generation cephalosporins. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle medzokhrof. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.